If you're anything like me, when you go shooting sporting clays, you get in a stand, you close your gun, you shoot a load, you get back out, go to the next stand. That's not how the professionals do it. And when I hooked up with Ed Solomons at Grimsthorpe for a clay tour, go check that video out, he taught me the basics of pre-shot routine and how to approach a sporting clay stand. Here it is. So first stand, you've got a left-handed rabbit going downhill. You can just see behind the trees there. Second target, orange standard, thrown as an edge on incomer, dropping out in front of you. How should one approach this stand? Because I'd get in, I'd go, there's a trap there, I'm gonna, I'll just shoot it, I wouldn't even see a pair, I'll just get in and shoot and have some fun. But that's a very different way as to the way and to that, And that, I suppose, is, the, is, is an important comment because it's gonna start getting you understanding the difference between practicing to hit a bird and practicing the right move. So just because you can hit these targets doesn't mean what you're doing is correct. What I want you to be able to go in is build a bit of a structure, a bit of a plan, which is what we can talk about as we go around if you like, but be able to come in and understand before you call pull on the first target, you shouldn't be getting any surprises. You should know exactly where you want to kill it, exactly where you're going to hold and why you're going to hold there, where your eyes are going to be when you've shot the first target, how you're going to transition into the whole point for the second. All of this stuff needs to be mapped out. This so, is a pre-shot routine. Yeah, this would be in your pre-shot planning, your pre-shot routine, which is done outside of the hoop. And then when you step in, don't laugh at the word hoop. And when you step, <laughs> when you step in, you're going to do the, the sort of the action of the plan and actually following through what you've, you've planned doing. So a bit more thinking, a bit more work out here, easier shooting in there, but it needs to be like a premeditated, I'm going to do the following. Because if you go in with no plan, yeah, you probably hit your first peg. And, well, yeah, no, I hit the first two, so I should be able to hit all of them. Not if they're dog shit shots, because if your moves are awful, you get away with it for two, you won't get away with it for eight. And it's about learning what you're doing, understanding what was good, what was bad. It's not always whether you hit the target is good and you miss the target is bad. You can hit birds with bad shots and you can miss birds with good shots. Like we said on the tower, if your move's right, I don't really care where you go to start with until you've drilled the right move in. It's the movement you're practicing, not the outcome. And that's when people practice. They tend to practice with that sort of end goal as being the focus. The hit is the important bit, and not what, how you get to yeah, the Yeah, and I'm much more interested in how you hit them. Same with cars. If you want to hit, get around a track, you learn everything before going fast. You can go and put a fast time in, but it doesn't count. Yeah. Because you'll never, you hit a ceiling, you'll hit ceilings. And we, listen, we've all done it where you go into a stand and you probably shoot six or eight straight targets. So you've got them all on the card, but you come out and go, that was eight out of eight, but it could have been a five. That yeah. was when you got away with bad moves. Equally, you'd have shot eight or 10 straight. And sometimes you think I could go in there and do that all day. That is because the mechanics you're using are legit, they're working, mm -hmm. and you could consistently do it because you know what's happening. The worst thing you hear people say is, oh, I can hit loads of targets, but I never know how I'm doing it. Well, if you can't tell, you can't explain to yourself how you've hit something, how can I expect you to do it 10 times in a row? Yeah. And it's the same thing when it doesn't work. If you haven't got a plan, you don't know what's happening, and it's not working, there's a lot more sky than there is clay, and you'll spend a lot of time finding it. All right, so, we've so got, with that in, light, in mind, we've got an ear. Let's, let's, let's shoot so, these birds, I suppose. Let's have a look at the birds and let me talk you through how I would look at them. Okay? What's all this about? Do people do this? Do you do this? Yeah, so that, for me, I'll be using that to figure out where my hold points are, where my lines yeah. are and where my markers are. Okay. It's not really doing too much other than, yes, it can feed it's the mental, the target. Yeah. It's just, this is like a dry run of me putting the barrel up. So that's, right. that's where I come from. So looking at this bird, first thing I'd look at with any target is if I had one shot and my life depended on it, where would I choose to kill it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so to me, Easiest spot is pretty much 12 o'clock before it starts going yep. down that dip. Okay, so I'd be setting my feet up for that point, getting myself comfortable. I'd then be caught doing what we call reading the target. That's where you understand what the target's doing at your kill point relative to you. So that's a combination of angle, speed, and distance. Mm -hmm. That's going to start building up your perception of whether you're going to have to be straight at it in front, long way in front, low, high, getting a relationship between where the gun where is going to be place your relative shot. to the target. Next thing's going to be your hold point. So there isn't a black and white rule of you should always come back X, it's target dependent. Something that's crossing, I will generally come between half and two thirds of the way back. I think in this case, just outside that tree is gonna be a good spot for mm -hmm. me. That then gives me probably 10 yards to work my eyes. Watching the bird come to the gun, you're gonna connect here, and that gives you what is it, 15, 20 foot, matching the speed of the bird to just drift out into the front leading edge, which is what I think this is gonna take, okay? When I've shot that, I know my gun's gonna finish here. Yeah. Bang. I've then gotta do exactly the same process for the second target yeah. and plan how I'm gonna transition into it. So same thing, first thing, where looks best for you to kill that bird? Uh, just as it breaks that ditch. 
Okay, so it's on the wind starts to ridge feet white. So you're saying about there. Bang, yeah. Okay, tell me two things that that bird is doing at that point. Dropping and quartering. Okay, so you know you're going to have to be off the bottom right hand corner yep. of this, yeah? Is it fast or slow? Relatively slow. Okay, so we know it's not doing too much. Shallow angle, so it's coming in at you. This is something that would actually be very easy to overlead and it would be easy to do too much with the gun. So when we've shot the first one, bang, we're going to come up to where we're killing it and we're going to come just fractionally back in towards the trap, mm -hmm. okay? That's going to give us time to let the target come into the barrel and then you're just going to match the gun. it, bottom right, bang, Bonk. okay? Should feel like almost a moving rifle shot. There's going to be very, very little movement on the second target because it's such a shallow angle. It's amazing that you thought all of that through. I know, I'm not as thick as I look. <laughs> so, should I be shooting pre-mounted? Everyone who's winning is seemingly shooting pre-mounted. It's not a, I wouldn't say it's a black and white, am I shooting pre-mounted or not? Should I be considering pre-mounted as an option on certain targets? Absolutely yes. So anything that's screaming away from you or shallow angle getting away, I would say shoot gun up because it's just putting a massive amount of movement that doesn't need to be there, losing time Extra in. Extra variables. It's not giving you anything. Something like, for example, the second target here, plenty of time. If you want to shoot it gun down, you're more than welcome. First target, I wouldn't go for a full low gun mount. I might consider coming just out the shoulder to give my eyes a bit of space away from the gun. But within reason, it's what you're comfortable with. There isn't a right and a wrong. There's certainly, in certain instances, you can say this is definitely wrong. You know, if we had a trap target screaming away from you, shooting it from a low gun position is making life hard. We want to have decisions that make life easy. Okay. Yeah? All right. So run your first pair through you know, the plan that you want to go through. Okay. Then what we're going to do is see the outcome, see what the moves were like. If we need to change it, improve it, keep it the same, that's what's going to happen. Second target was a bit different when you had a gun on your shoulder. Okay, so you're going to have plenty more time. Yep. It actually, the fundamentals of your, your incomer, that was not a bad shot for me. You locked into the bird well, you connected. It was a good shot. So the fact that the target didn't break doesn't mean you need to start ripping everything down. It should have felt smooth, controlled, yeah. easy. Felt like a hit, but wasn't a hit. Perfect, okay. So we now need to go, what was wrong? It's obviously the sight picture. The fact of the matter is, you were almost on the bottom right-hand corner. You never really pulled away from it. Yep. So you were slightly high. The answer on this is to repeat the same process because the process was good. Shoot a fraction lower. Okay. So that should have also felt good. Yep, very good. Targets broke. Yep. This is now where you can repeat the same system. So you're not trying to shortcut and just get to the end result, which is breaking the target. Your workload here is to repeat the same move four times. And the outcome will come secondary. Work on the shot. This process that you're talking about is different in your head if you get into a fitass coupe or onto a game peg, I take yeah, it. Yeah, obviously, so fitass is a bit different because you've got the big variables of gun down and you're not doing the repetition work. This is why I think sporting is such a good discipline to learn your craft on because it forces you into this consistency, this sort of approach of trying to do the same thing consistently. Once you've drilled in your pre-shot routine and you're understanding the mechanics on this, it will become easier to transfer into sport, uh, fitass, compact, game shooting if you try and learn on those it's it's because you've got no consistency to learn from it's a longer road to learn consistently drill the consistency work in here like five pairs here and then you can start becoming a little bit more natural further down the line because you have to build a complete understanding of what you're doing to be yeah. able to do it 10 times this is understanding the mechanics of it the approach and just getting the confidence if you repeat the same process you will get the same outcome cool what it should do is takes you away from this, oh, I hope I hit the next pair. If you keep doing this process, you will. It's not magic. If you keep running the same system, you've seen, you keep crushing targets in the same place, the same way. The only reason that's going to stop happening is if you put a different variable in. Okay. Run the process. So there needs to be discipline and control and focus. Yeah. And this is why it's so easy to miss. You know, you, you only take your foot off the gas 5%. You don't lose 5% in scores. So you'll probably lose 15%. Make okay. every shot 100% focused, not on the outcome, but on the process. So when you go into a competition, I presume there is some pre-game, you have a Lucasade and a banana. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, you five or six hours of meditation, before, obviously. Uh, downward dog, uh, the regretful puffin. I have a pint or two of uh, nettle tea. Yeah. And if you can't get nettles, anything that stings works. So it can be jellyfish, uh, hornets, wasps, fire ants, they're good. Um, massage, steam room, and then straight out onto the course.
that's the key. Do you get your like bearers to take you out to peg? No, 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 I'm, I'm very much a man of the people. I will now walk occasionally. So um, as long as they don't look me directly in the, the eye. The problem is, is, seeing as it's such a long time ago that you were world champion, people yep. have forgotten that they're supposed but to respect you whilst being walked and I've in. got a beard, people probably won't recognise me, you see. That's I like to be able to walk, walk amongst the people unnoticed. So I cocked up the timing completely on that first one. Well, not completely, I hit it. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was completely, but the fact is you recognise it wasn't right. You still hit it, which shows that the process is working well. The important thing from my perspective is you recognise that just because the target broke, it wasn't right. So in the next pair, you can then go in and your focal point will be making the movement better rather than just trying to hit the target again. And this is what it's about. It's not just say, yay, I hit it, that was good. You can hit targets with absolute dog and you won't learn from it or be able to adjust. If you can start recognising when it's good and when it's bad, you can start improving your own game. And this is how to become a good sporting shooter. Yeah, a bit more bit more rounded, a bit less um, reactionary. A bit more fortune, a bit less good fortune, a bit more good planning. Yeah. Mm. So how do you conclude a video like this? Well, the answer is just to go back and watch it again if it didn't sink in, and then watch it again if it didn't sink in, and watch it again if it didn't sink in. Everything Ed said there struck a chord with me, and when now I pay attention to Clay Stand and follow all the things he says, my scores increase. More importantly, my confidence increases that, that you go in knowing what you're going to do before you even step in the stand. Everything's in place. Once you got in, you finalize. It's a really intelligent way of doing things. I always used to think the people who did this sort of thing were just a bit boring but hitting more targets isn't boring at all. Now all I have to worry about is Ant and Lloyd going on like that. And for those of you who are a bit confused or have any questions, the answer is just to book a couple of hours with Ed Solomons. You will not regret it, it will change your life. No, it won't, but it will make you a slightly better shot, which is the same thing. Guys, take care, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.